Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, I want to introduce what I like to think of as an awesome algebra shortcut. Now, it's technically not a shortcut. We don't classify things like that in mathematics so much. But I like to think of it as a shortcut because it helps us uh, kind of save time and it's an easier way to do something. Okay, now what am I talking about? Well, let's take a look at this example. So here I have a function a third degree polynomial function. So it's f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. So my question to you is go ahead and tell me what f of 2 for this particular function is equal to. Okay, now if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you should be able to figure this out pretty easily. But go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But uh, I'm going to show you how to do this problem. Uh, another way. We'll take a look at the, the way that most of you out there that are going to uh, do this problem. Then I'm going to introduce this concept to you, uh, which is a nice, lovely shortcut. And it's something you absolutely are going to need to know uh, if you are taking um, uh, any math course at the, let's say, the Algebra 2, College Algebra, or Pre-Calculus level. And this little kind of L uh, uh, symbol right here that I kind of wrote is a little bit of a clue. So if you kind of recognize this, and this is not the way we'd exactly write it, but this is what I'm going to be talking about, right? So if you think you know what I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to put that into the comment sections uh, as well. I want to show you the correct answer to this, and then I'm going to introduce to you uh, this lovely uh, shortcut. Now, if you happen to be in like Algebra 1 or just basic algebra, stick around because again, you're going to see this in the future. But uh, you know, again, I'm going to show you something that's going to be pretty cool and you'll definitely be uh, able to understand it. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave the direct links to my Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calculus and Geometry courses uh, directly in the description if you happen to be uh, studying math at those levels. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is our function. We want to evaluate this function for f of 2. Even those of you out there that are taking Algebra 1 should be able to uh, get the answer. So let's go and take a look at that right now. So if we evaluate that function, the one I just showed, uh, no, this one right up here, right? This function here for f of 2, our uh, answer is going to be 0. Okay, so that function evaluated for 2 is 0. Now, if you got that right, that is fantastic. I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to evaluate a function and uh, you know this is a kind of a basic skill a basic algebra skill okay so you know I don't want to say I'm gonna make a big big deal out of it but you know good job if you got this right and feel free to uh, uh, use a calculator if you needed to right it's a nice job now if you don't if you didn't understand what uh, this uh, means well I'm gonna explain what it means to evaluate a function and let's go ahead and do this right now, okay? Because some of you out there, right, may not even know what it's uh, like to evaluate a function. All right, so here is our function. And a function is basically a rule, okay? This x right here is uh, the same as these x's, right? It's the same variable. And uh, what we can do is just uh, what we call evaluate or plug a number, a value into a function, okay? Now, again, uh, that value has to be part of that function's domain, all right? That's kind of a technical way of saying that uh, it's allowed to be plugged into that function. There are certain functions where you cannot plug in certain values. That's another kind of a discussion. So, again, if you uh, need help with functions, domain, any of that stuff, just check out my respective math courses. I'll teach you everything you need to know. But if we want to evaluate this function for uh, 2, what we're going to do is replace all the x's here. Okay, obviously we're replacing this x with 2. So all these x's here, we're just going to plug in a 2. All right, we've got to be very mindful, though, that when we plug in a number for a variable, we want to um, uh, use parentheses when we do that. Okay, so here's what we have. I'm kind of erase this right here. So we're evaluating this function uh, for 2. So that's going to be 2 cubed minus 2. Uh, uh, 2 times 2 squared 
plus 4 times 2 minus 8. And now we can just go ahead and clean this up using the order of operations. So let's go to do that right now. So 2 cubed is going to be 8 minus 2 times 2 squared. Remember, we're going to do powers first. So that will be 2 to, uh, squared is 4. So we'll clean this up here in a second. Uh, plus 4 times 2, which, of course, is going to be 8 minus 8. And now let's go ahead and just finally get the uh, you know final answer. So we've got 8 and then uh, minus 2 times 4 is 8 plus 8 minus 8. All these 8s cross cancel and we're left with 0. So f of 2 is 0. Okay, so I'm suspecting that like 99% of you out there evaluated this function in this manner. And that's good. Okay, that's exactly how you should have done the problem. But there is another approach you can take okay one that you're going to need to know um, and let's go ahead and get into this right now and again you're going to need to know this at the uh, you know these more advanced level mathematics doesn't mean that you still don't evaluate functions this way but i'm going to use this example of evaluating functions to introduce this awesome shortcut called synthetic division now this is a big topic and it falls underneath the bigger topic of polynomial division Okay, so yes, indeed, we can uh, divide polynomials. Let me just make something up here. Let's say I had 3x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 9x plus 1. I could take that polynomial and I could divide in this polynomial, x squared minus 1, into it. So it's like polynomial division, and it seems kind of crazy. Like, yeah, how am I going to do this? You know, that's like... It's not like you're dividing 3 into 12, right? But really, uh, when we divide this way, okay, way back like in your, you know, fourth grade math, this division, okay, you're using, you're using something called the division algorithm, right? You're like, what are you talking about, Mr. U2 Math Man? You know, you're getting a little crazy here. What are you talking about, division algorithm? Yes, division and algorithm, okay, this little fancy word here, is like a computer program. An algorithm is just basically uh, a recipe. It's a step, you know, to do something, okay? That's what an algorithm is. So when we're talking like computer language, you know, or mathematics, an algorithm is kind of a procedure, if you will, okay? So when you divide um, uh, numbers, okay, you go through this procedure, you're like, okay, this number can't go into this, can it go into this, you do this, and, you know, you multiply, you, know, you subtract, you look for remainders, you're going through an actual algorithm, whether you <laughs> realized it or not. And that algorithm, effectively, is what you're going to be using to divide polynomials. Now, this is a big topic in advanced mathematics, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into it right now, but you, you first learn about polynomial division, you learn something called long division. Okay, and then you get into this awesome shortcut right here called synthetic division, and we need to um, know this kind of little shortcut to help us out when we're trying to solve advanced polynomial equations. So, for example, this equation right here, if I was trying to solve it, in other words, I would set it uh, equal to zero and try to find the roots. It's a polynomial, so it's going to have four roots. That's a quite challenging problem, okay, and synthetic division is this kind of little uh, shortcut tool that can, uh, you can use. Now, let me just tell you very briefly, um, you cannot use synthetic division for all polynomial division scenarios. And I'm, of course, I'm going to show it to you because you're like, what is it? You know, what are you even talking about? I don't even know what synthetic division is. I'll show you this example in a second, but I want to kind of set this up. So here we're taking this polynomial, for example, and we're dividing it by this polynomial, x squared minus 1. In this case, you cannot use synthetic division, all right? This would be a scenario where you have to use what we call long division, and that's a big kind of a project. But if you are dividing a polynomial by what we call a linear factor, something like x plus 5 or even 2x minus 3, anything that's linear, in other words, power 1, like so, then you can use this lovely tool, synthetic division, and it is awesome, and really the main benefit of uh, using synthetic division is to kind of evaluate functions, but uh, most uh, specifically checking to see uh, if you have a zero or a root or solution of that particular polynomial. Okay, and there's a whole nother discussion into it. This is going to be a quick discussion. I've done other videos on YouTube about synthetic division, little intro videos, but if you want to learn this, 
go to any one of my respective courses because there's a lot uh, to it. Okay, you need to see a lot of variations of this, but let's just do a basic introduction of how cool uh, synthetic division is. Okay, so we're going to do the same problem here. Here is our function. We're going to do the same problem. We're going to evaluate the function for two. Now, we already know that the answer, f of 2, is 0 because we just uh, did this using, you know, the way uh, that, you know, we typically, uh, the approach that we typically take when we're evaluating functions. But I'm going to do this using synthetic division just to introduce to you how cool this is. Okay, so how do we do synthetic division? Let's get to it. All right, so here is our function. And what we need to do is uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, first things that we have to look at before we can actually do synthetic division. The first thing is we need to have our polynomial here written in standard form. We need to have it in highest to lowest power. So here we have x cubed, x squared, x, and numbers. Now, if there happens to be a missing power, let's say we had x cubed and we had no x squared uh, term, and then we just had zero, we would have to put a zero in for x squared, okay? So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Then we're going to be focused on the um, leading coefficients of, or the, um, the coefficients in this course, that's the leading coefficient here. So this is one, we're looking at the coefficients of these, uh, of the polynomial written in standard form. So we have one here, we have negative two there, we have four here, positive four, and a negative eight. Again, if something was missing, like if x squared was missing, there was no x squared here, we would just fill that in with a zero, okay? All right, now what we're going to do is make this like upside down L, or not upside down, <laughs> like a regular L like this, right? So, you know, oftentimes you'll see it this way. You might see it uh, written, you know, like so, um, but you'll see something like this. So we're going to just write the coefficients, 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 8. So this is the uh, setup, right? you got to make sure... Again, the polynomial is in standard form, and if there's anything missing, you're just going to plug in a zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and now uh, figure out what f of 2 is for this function. All right, so this is the setup, and uh, we're going to find f of 2. So that means that we're going to put a little 2 right here in front of our little l. Okay, so here's the coefficients of that polynomial. We're going to put a 2 right there. Okay, right, right there. So... Uh, what do we do? Well, now this is the cool part, okay? So remember all the work that it took to uh, find f of 2. I mean, it wasn't a crazy amount of work, but it was, you know, you know, a decent amount of work. So here is synth uh, synthetic division in action, okay? Super cool. So what we're going to do is going to take this first number, whatever it is right there, we're going to drop it down right here, all right? So this is 1. We're going to put a 1 right there. Okay, now what uh, what we're going to do next is uh, a little process, and you're going to just repeat it until we're done. So here it goes. So it's 2 times 1. So whatever this number is, you're going to multiply it by this number. So 2 times 1 is what? 2 times 1 is 2. You're going to put the answer right there. All right, so drop that down. 2 times 1 is 2. No big deal. There's a 2. So what do you do next? You're just going to add down. Okay, so negative 2 plus 2 is what? zero. Okay, so it's zero. What are we going to do now? We're going to do the same thing. That's going to be two times zero. So now we're just doing the same thing. Instead of using one, we're just scooting over here. So it's two times zero is what? It's going to be zero. The answer we're going to put right here. So two times zero is zero. What do we do next? We add down. So four plus zero is what? That is four. What are we going to do next? The same thing. Two times four is what? It's 8. We put the answer right here, 8. Okay. Then we do what? We add down. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. This right here happens to be what we call the remainder. Uh, and there's the different theorems that you're going to have to learn uh, related to synthetic division and polynomial division in general called the remainder theorem. Uh, the, the factor, the, uh, let's see, a remainder theorem, rational root theorem, just to name a few. Uh, but what this means, this number, is the same thing as finding f of 2, whatever your answer is, this is it, okay? So in other words, if you wanted to find, evaluate that function for like f of 7, all right, all you would have to do is just plug a 7 in right here and run through the process. You just drop the 1 down right here, so 7 times 1 is what? That would be 7, 
right there. Negative 2 plus 7 is uh, 5. Uh, put a 5 right there. 7 times 5, 35 right here. And just go through it. And whatever this uh, number is, uh, it's the same thing as finding f of 7. All right. And this is how we check very quickly if we have a zero, a root, okay, a solution uh, to a particular polynomial. Use synthetic division. It's an awesome, awesome little tool and, uh, you know, comes in handy. Now, its main purpose is not to just evaluate functions, um, you know, like how I kind of demonstrated. You can definitely use it uh, for that, but you're going to be using it as part of your uh, algebra toolkit to solve uh, more advanced polynomial equations. You know, the type of stuff that you're going to face in these courses like Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus. Okay. Again, this is part of a bigger topic called po polynomial. Um, uh, well, it's kind of the big, big topic here is solving higher order uh, polynomial equations, anything beyond two, right? Because, you know, when you have a second degree x squared, this is a quadratic equation and you learn this stuff in algebra one you can use a quadratic formula but when you have x cubed well you, you know it's a whole different ball game but there's a lot more here that i'm not covering okay that i wish i could and i get tempted to I'm like yeah, i just love teaching this stuff and i don't want you know i want to make sure that you know everything you need to know but it's impossible for me to cover all of this in uh one video what i wanted to do though was at least um, introduce this concept to you, all right, and just show you how awesome, you know, some of these little shortcuts, what I think of uh, shortcuts, uh, are in algebra. They're not everywhere, but from time to time, you come across these little techniques and methods that you definitely need to know. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.